makes a good uh, manufactured home development for you guys? Sure, I see my partner like. pointing. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we have kind of a, a saying uh, around let, let the math lead us the right direction or, or let's deal in facts, right? So you don't want to get emotional <laughs> around it, especially when you're dealing with a syndication. It, it like our, our goal is to get a return for the investor. So what we're looking for is, first of all, a property where there's demand, Okay. So, you know, we want to be in a town maybe of about 20,000 or, or higher, um, but we stay out of the major metropolitan areas. Like we don't have anything as, as an example in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And, and why it's because oftentimes, you know, your big uh, real estate investors come in and it gets very competitive uh, to start bidding on property here, let alone just the, the price per pad. So, you know, when you get into a town like Brookings, South Dakota, as an example, um, there's there's probably within 30, 40 miles of that city, all kinds of different small communities that can feed into it that people come and, and you know, work inside there. So we'll look for uh, first the area, right? Uh, the kind of population we want to deal with so that we're not uh, outbidding or, or bidding against big investors. And then what we want is the upside. So we'll look for probably the, the park in the roughest shape with the least amount of infill with the most upside. Um, so we can come in and, and let's say, for example, it's a hundred pads park, uh, but it only has 20 homes sitting there. That, that's right in our wheelhouse. Um, and maybe there's a busted water line or something in it. And, you know, it, it's just a tough park. Well, oftentimes that park will have a tough time getting, um, a loan on it. So other investors, if they don't have the cash or a syndication behind them, there's not enough cash flow for the bank to give anybody a note on it. So again, those type of parts kind of keep the, the competition down uh, so you can get a good price on it. And then what, what we'll do is, is come in and within about six months, 18 months, 12 months, somewhere in that range, um, fix all the problems and start infilling, right? And, and bring five, 10, 15 homes in at a crack. And, and, and our goal is within three, maybe five years tops, we've got that park in a position where it's full, it's stable, the, the rent's at at least market rate, right, average. And uh, it's a really attractive asset for somebody to come in and buy, and then we can get our return for our investors. So, you know, there's a lot more to it than that, but what we're looking for is a, a, a community of around 20,000, you know, maybe to 100,000, somewhere in that range. You know, there's some industry around it that's feeding the workforce. Um, you know, affordable housing is, is in demand. We'll go and we'll look at the median uh, home sale rate as well, right? To make sure uh, that that's gonna help us as we're looking to sell mobile homes uh, and then come in and, and fix it up and, and sell it. Rudy, did I miss anything, buddy? <laughs> What the, no, you did a nice job. The, the, our little catchphrase internally is, you know, we look for the good uncontrollables and the bad controllables. And so meaning like we want to find a city that's got a good job market. It's got a good, you know, it's, maybe it's got a university there. It's just all the things Mike just said, but then the bad uh, controllables, you know, bad management, they were undercapitalized, you know, they lost some houses, whatever it is, because we can fix all that. We can address that. I can't address uh, as a property owner, <clears throat> I can't address the job market very well in that city, right? I can't address the, you know, is there, you know, a good university, is there good demand? You know, I could try, but that's really hard. That's a big mountain for me to climb. And so we're looking, you know, to make it as simple as we can. And and so that's that's how we think about it. And, and Gordon, so I'll give you an example. I'd, I'd like to talk quick. I'll give you this ahead. really no, good yeah, example. Go um, so out in Williston, North Dakota, uh, there's a big oil boom there was, right? And, and uh, affordable housing was in a huge demand. So there's all kinds of mobile home parks going up around there and, you know, what they call man camps and just any place they can get to live to serve that industry, right? Well, we stayed away from it. We stayed away from it because the whole market is driven by one industry. And if that one industry goes down, all of a sudden, all those workers pick up and take off to wherever the next boom is. And now you got a half-filled park or potentially an empty park. So it, it's not saying that that's a bad investment out there. What it's saying is it doesn't fit what we look for. Uh, and that's multiple industries feeding a community so we can be sure and kind of de-risk it 
and, and make sure there's good uh, uh, demand for housing. A change of pace from the Get Rich Quick Gurus. Subscribe to the Real Finds podcast for in-depth conversations with voices shaping the real estate world.